when was the first time that you saw shared bi bicycles like these? It's very likely that this was less than a decade ago. Bike sharing is a relatively new phenomenon and it has more or less exploded over the last couple of years. In this video, we will briefly look at the history of bike sharing in cities and explore some of the factors that are crucial to its success and failure. Organized bike sharing schemes are an essential and very visible element of city, cities' mobility policies. Shared bikes are promising for short distance travel and to solve the infamous last mile problem. Shared bicycles take people from the bus, the train or subway to their work, a shopping center or a tourist des destination. They're used by commuters, shoppers, tourists and students alike. Bike sharing schemes are popular among cities. The bright colors and emblems on the city bikes not only make them easy to find, but also make them function as icons for the city and its sustainable mobility policies. Paris, for example, is globally known for its well-organized and widespread Philippe system. This bicycle scheme started in 2007 with 7,000 bikes and grew to 18,000 in 2017. Recently, the city announced a doubling of its urban space for cyclists. Paris, however, is far from the only city where bike sharing has had a growth spurt. Here you see a graph with some unofficial data on the number of cities with a recognized bike sharing scheme. As you can see, since 2006, bike sharing schemes have developed in the span of about 20 years from niche experiments into an accepted, almost mainstream option for public transport. Important for this rapid growth are a series of innovations that have so far produced four different generations of bike sharing schemes. The first generation consists of small scale attempts to share ordinary bikes without locks. Amsterdam became famous for its white bike plan, a mid 1960s initiative launched by activists. The first generation bikes suffered from theft and vandalism and failed overall. It was not until 1995 that Copenhagen introduced a large scale public bike sharing system. This second generation involved sturdy bikes that were equipped with a coin deposit and could be rented and returned at a number of bike stations in the city. Despite their specific design, the bikes were still prone to theft and vandalism and not attractive enough for end users. A breakthrough came with the third generation of bike sharing, which you find nowadays in big cities around the world. These bikes use smart guards for payments, are equipped with position trackers and are electronically locked at stations around the city. Famous, cities, uh, famous systems are not to be found only in Paris and Copenhagen, but also in Beijing, Mexico City and many other cities in the world. Despite the innovations that have produced ever more attractive generations of city bikes, a silver bullet bike sharing system does not yet exist. It remains challenging for city authorities and companies to furnish the city with slow infrastructures that survive and prosper and deliver all the mobility functions ascribed to them. In order to survive and prosper in the long run, bikes have to fit the lifestyles travel preferences and existing traveling routines of citizens. Bike sharing systems easily fail in this respect because the requirements for a bike to fit everyday city life are very high. The bikes can be too expensive to rent, can require complex regi registration processes, may be too heavy to cycle uphill, can sometimes only be used with a smartphone with broadband internet connection, or cannot easily be dropped when you are in a hurry to catch a train. In 2014, an advanced commercial variant of third generation city bikes emerged in Chinese cities. They are dockless and equipped with GPS and smart locks that can be controlled by an app. 
They can be taken and left at any place in the city. These bikes may develop into a prospective fourth generation of ICT-loaded e-bikes that better fit modern city life. To conclude, bike sharing systems are likely to stay and prosper due to the combination of new ICTs and city governments increasing ambitions for sustainable mobility. In order to flourish, shared bikes need to fit the everyday lives and the mobility routines of their users. The success of bike sharing, therefore, depends on co-creation processes that involve the continuous improvement and redesign of next generation bike sharing systems. Only by taking into account of citizens and their practices and routines can bike sharing develop into an attractive and taken for granted element of everyday city life. <laughs>